Peace and blessings, guys. Peace and blessings. Mark the Messenger. We're back on another video. This one's going to be about eight signs. Now, it's supposed to be seven signs. I just erased. Um, I just added a number eight just right now because this is a, that's a gem, too, as well. This is the eight warning signs. God does not want you to date someone, guys. So always take heed. Understand when you're advancing in the kingdom of God, when you're seeking God's kingdom, uh, when you're just, you know, trying to be on the narrow path, Satan's going to send counterfeits. Satan's going to send agents your way. What do agents do to destroy your walk with Christ, to destroy what God has planned for you? So always understand that we must be wise. We must have wisdom to discern who to allow in and who to, who to keep. Okay, so let's go. Let's go. These are eight warning signs. I guess the number eight, I just added it in right now because it's the gem too. Let's go. Let's go. This is also going to be some of my experiences that I experienced and also with my friends, what they told me to. Okay, number one is disagreements. Okay, disagreements happen more than often. I made sure to add happen more than often because you're not always going to agree with someone. But when you find yourself disagreeing more than you agree together, it's not going to work. Even the Bible says in Amos chapter 3, verse 3, it says, How could two walk together except they be agreed? So if you guys find yourself disagreeing, whether it's doctrines, whether it's certain lifestyles, uh, certain belief systems, whatever the case may be, guys, that is a sign from God, a number one sign from God that it's time to keep it moving. Now, you don't have to hate the person. You don't have to completely cut that person off. But uh, for relationship-wise, dating-wise, I would let it go because the longer you hold on to uh, like a you know potential mate, potential partner, the stronger the bonds are going to be, the stronger the soul ties are going to be, which is going to mean it's going to be harder to break free. So once you get these signs, guys, you're disagreeing more than you agree. Like I said, you're going to have disagreements. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you find yourself disagreeing more than you agree, that is a warning sign, guys. So you got to let them go. Number two is too much confusion. Okay, in a relationship, guys, it should, you know, of course, we're going to have times where it's not always going to be clear. But if you find it's too much confusion, does this person like me? Does she like me? You know, it's just when, when it led to too much confusion, because you always understand that the Bible even says that God is not the author of confusion. So when you find yourself in a relationship with someone and it's just you, you have you know too much confusion, we're supposed to meet this day. They don't show up. Supposed to meet that day. They don't show up. That's just a sign. That's a warning sign. OK, always understand that. That's, a, you know, too much. That's a warning sign. I'm telling you, when it's just too much confusion. That's not God's not the author of you guys coming together. He's not because the Bible says what God brings together, let no man separate. The thing is, though, not every time is God bringing people together. People love to use that scripture. I use that scripture too in the past, but you got to always be wise. Like I said, Satan can, Satan can send his agents, his counterfeits your way. So always understand that. Not everyone is being sent by God. That's why we have to have discernment and wisdom. Okay. Number three, and discernment is a gift of the Holy Spirit. So we must have, be having the Holy Spirit in us. Number three, they have no plans or intentions to seek God's kingdom. Guys, they have no plans to seek God's kingdom. They have no plans to walk that narrow path. God does not want you to be with them because if you're now, of course, not everyone's trying to do that, which my channel is all about pushing that. But if you are trying to do that, which you should, you can't be with someone who's of the world, someone who's not, you know, really for God, someone who's not trying to live a, a life of righteousness, who's not a lover of the truth, who doesn't have Jesus in their life. You don't want to be, you don't want to be with that, guys. You want to be with someone who's seeking God's kingdom. Of course, are they going to be perfect or sinless? Absolutely not. But they're trying the best they can. They're humble. That's the people we want to be one. If, if you, if you guys, that's, that's a warning sign from God, guys. If that person's not trying to seek God's kingdom, not living for righteousness, Okay, not trying to deny themselves, deny their flesh. Like I said, are they going to be perfect? Of course not. But I'm talking about they're just willfully just giving over to themselves to the flesh. You got to understand when you guys get married, let's say if you guys do get married and that person is not seeking God's kingdom and you are, that person's living in the flesh and you're living in the spirit, Satan's going to come and still kill and destroy your family and you, both of you guys together. So always be wise. Okay, remember not to live in lust. When you live in lust and you're thinking down here, you're not thinking up here, if you know what I'm talking about. You're not thinking up here when you're living in lust. So always Understand that, guys. Walk in the spirit. Don't forget the lust of the flesh and be patient when it comes to people. Okay, always be patient. Number four is they have no conviction. This, this links to number three. They feel no conviction when in willful sin and disobedience. As a child of God, okay, especially as a chosen one, because your chosen one, we have much responsibility through much is given, much is required. When we live in a disobedience, when we when we're given over to willful sin, we feel conviction, we feel sorrow, we feel you know, we feel bad. If so, if someone's or less, and we're, we're trying to change, are we going to change instantly? Depends how, whoever, you know, depends on the person, but we want to change. We don't want to live in willful sin. We want to be at the bottom. We don't want to be the tail. We want to be the head. So this is a sign guys, if someone's like falls into a sin, right? And they're not trying to fight it off. They're not, they're not, you know, like months later, okay, I can understand things happen in life. I'm, I'm not here to judge nobody. Okay. But let's say like months later and they're just like not feeling any conviction, just, you know, spiritually dead. That's a warning sign that that person, and you're trying to fight it. They're not. That's a warning sign, guys. Always take heed. Like I said, things happen in life. I don't know. They might have been homeless. 
they might have lost a family member. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. So I'm not here to judge anybody, but always understand that when you're trying to walk the narrow path and that person is not trying to, guys, that's why I said it correlates with number three. You just probably want the best that you can just to keep it moving, keep it pushing. Now, of course, you want to pray about it. Ask God, okay, because God is your king over your life. He should let you know who to keep and who not to keep. And also, like I said, wisdom and discernment. Okay, number five is they keep hurting you in the early stages, okay? Now, of course, I got to always say this because always that one person. In a marriage and relationship, there's going to be times where, you know, someone's hurt, stuff like that. That's nothing wrong. But in the beginning stages, the beginning stage is supposed to be like, you know, what they call like the honeymoon stage, right? Where things are, you know, things are going good. But in the early stages, guys, they keep hurting you, betraying you. This is a red flag, guys. That's a warning sign. And see, one thing I got said in one of my earlier videos, sometimes God will allow them to hurt you, guys, because God showed you multiple signs that they're not meant to be in your life, and you ignore those signs. So God will allow them to hurt you because sometimes the only way we can let go of them is through their hurt, the heartbreaks, the sorrow, uh, going broke, you know, stuff like that, the hurt. That sometimes God will allow them. He will put a spirit on them to hurt you, and he will allow the enemy to win because he, God gave you so many signs. He gave you dreams. He gave you visions. The Holy Spirit was speaking. He, he gave you eyes to see. He showed you the red flags and you didn't want to let them go. So God will allow them to hurt you. So always understand that you got to have accountability when you come with dealing with people. Stop blaming other people because even the Bible says in the Apocrypha, it says like a wicked man is given over to a wicked woman and a righteous man is given uh, and, um, and a righteous woman is given over to him who fears the Lord. Okay, so always understand that accountability, accountability. Now, of course, you don't always attract who you are, but most of the time we, we share similar traits. Okay, and that's to make you want to change. When you attract the narcissist in your life, guys, maybe there's something in me that I have to change. I have to reflect. Okay, that's all. We got to have accountability. This is how you get to grow in life. But like I said, guys, number five, when they keep hurting in the early stages, that's just an indicator, guys. It's not meant to be. Keep it moving because, like I said, the more you hold on to that person, and, you know, and God has showed you multiple times. And you, we know when God shows, let's keep it real. We know when God shows someone's not right, right for us. But let's say, like I said, you're living a life of fornication. You're living a life of lust. Okay, when you're living a life of lust, that means your flesh is going to rage war against your spirit. So you won't obey the Holy Spirit. You won't obey when God's talking to you because you're in the flesh. Always understand that. Number six is you find them being sneaky. Ooh, you find them being sneaky and catching them in lies. Ooh, <laughs> you find them being sneaky and catching them. Guys, red flag. Where's my, where's my red flag at, guys? Oh, that's not, that's not, where's my red flag? I don't know where it's at. Okay, that's a red flag. That's a, that's a, <laughs> that's a red flag. Maybe I might take off my shirt off. No, I'm just joking. That is a red flag, bro. When someone's being sneaky and, and they're lying over and over again. Okay, nah, heck, heck nah, bro. Cut them off. Cut them off, bro. That's a red. That's a probably one of the. I'm not gonna say that's the biggest one, but that's probably top. That's probably up there. Okay, when you keep catching them lies and, and and they're being sneaky, and you catch them. Okay, God doesn't want you to be with, with someone like that, guys. Let's keep it real. Let's keep it like I said. We have these soul ties with these individuals, so because now it's harder for us to let go. Okay, but like I said, guys, in the beginning, especially in the beginning stages, guys. Like I'm talking about within a couple of weeks, couple of months, you catch them being sneaky and you keep catching them in lies. That is a red flag, guys. And like I said, we must take heed to the Holy Spirit, which is linked to number seven. The Holy Spirit will warn you over and over and over and over. Yes. The Holy Spirit warns us. A lot of the time, guys, let's keep it real. We're in the flesh. We're living in lavish lust. And, uh, you know, the flesh, the Bible even says the flesh wages war against your spirit. So when you're living in the flesh, it's going to be a lot harder to be obedient. It's going to be a, hard, a lot harder to walk in the spirit. Not saying that you can't fight the fight the, uh, fight the good fight, but you got to understand your flesh is going to overtake you. The Holy Spirit, God will always warn you over and over and over again. Okay. A lot of the times, guys, we like to be disobedient. And then we wonder why, you know, uh, we went, uh, we wonder why bad things happen in our life. We wonder why. Well, because the Bible says he who sows his flesh shall reap corruption. So that is what's happening. When you get that narcissist, you know, but like I said, guys, always take accountability because sometimes, not all the time, sometimes when you're with that narcissist, because you might have similar traits with that, that same person or him or her. Okay. Not all the time, but sometimes. Okay. So always understand that the Holy Spirit will warn you over and over again. If you've been with a narcissist for five years, you definitely have some traits as that person, because let's say like, I, I can all, I can understand like you all been together for a couple weeks, couple months, whatever. That's different. But five, 10 years. That means you have some traits in you too as well because you would have been, you would have took heed to the Holy Spirit. Okay? The thing about the narcissist, right? 
The narcissist doesn't have the Holy Spirit. Because if, if, they, if they had the Holy Spirit, they wouldn't be a narcissist. They wouldn't have that. Because the narcissist is a devilish, demonic spirit. Okay? So always understand that. Number eight. Woo! This is a good one too, man. Number eight, man. They belittle you and make you feel less confident. I know this might be kind of hard for y'all to see. So it says, they belittle you and make you feel less confident. Okay? Someone that you're with, guys, is going to want to make you feel... Not to say they're going to be like... Like, you know, you know how girls on social media do nowadays. I want a guy to make brag about me. You don't want to do all that same stuff, my dear. <laughs> you know, when you're around them, like, oh, you look cute. Oh, you look fine. You know, like stuff like that. A little, little compliments. Okay. Uh, when someone's pulling you down. Oh, why, why don't you wearing that today? Or you see, you could get better shoes or you need a new car. You need a better car. You know, they start, you know, belittling you, man, kick rocks, bro. Kick rocks the person who's meant to be in your life that kingdom husband that kingdom spouse or wife whatever y'all call it these days okay that person's not going to belittle you that person's not going to make you feel like uh, insecure and like that that person's going to make you feel confident make you feel like dang you know you that you you that no <laughs> you know what i'm saying you that you you're a king okay or maybe you're a girl you're a queen that's that person's going to make you feel that way okay they're going to have love for you because they have god and he who knows god has love in them okay so always understand that these are the signs, guys. Like I said, number eight just popped up right before I made this video. And this is true, man. The people who try to belittle you and stuff like that, or let's say if you got like a, a blessing coming your way or you receive that blessing, they try to belittle that blessing. Psh, kick rocks. I'm telling you guys, quick summary. Eight signs. God does not want you to date someone. Number one, disagreements happen more than often. Number two, too much confusion. Number three, they have no plans or intentions to seek God's kingdom. Number four, they feel no conviction when in willful sin disobedience. Like I said, not here to judge anybody. I don't know your situation, so I'll make that very clear. Number five is they keep hurting you in the early stages. Number six, you find them being sneaky and catching them in lies. Number seven, the Holy Spirit will warn you over and over. Number eight, they belittle you and make you feel less confident. Woo! I hope you guys enjoyed some of this video. I love you guys so much. I really do. Y'all don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share this on all social media platforms. If you wish to support me, I'll link you down below in the description. All right, I'm out. Peace.